uh, today's text. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Especially, let us take a look at verse uh, 7. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our immortis, our infirmities, and bore our diseases. Yeah. Uh, before around uh, 800 years ago, the prophet Isaiah uh, prophesied about Jesus. He took up our infirmities and bore our disease. Uh, through cross, Jesus uh, took away our sins and he took up our informatis and bore our diseases. Yeah. The world uh, was fulfilled. Okay, today's text, uh, text Matthew 8, verses 14 to 17. Uh, based on these uh, scriptures, uh, I want to talk about uh, healing of the body. Uh, we have been talking about uh, healings recently and uh, today I would like to focus on physical healing. And these days many strange diseases are emerging and illnesses like cancer, uh, diabetes and mental disorders have become all too common. Uh, recently, a doctor from uh, KAIST University in Korea conducted an important study and made a remarkable uh, discovery. <clears throat> Until now, uh, when a people, when a when a person had cancer, uh, the usual approach was to uh, surgically remove the uh, cancerous cells. However, uh, this researcher has been studying how to convert cancer cells back into normal cancer, normal cells. He has achieved significant progress. And I, and I thought a time is coming when cancer cells will be restored to normal. And a new era of healing is upon us. Just as people often live with minor illnesses like uh, colds or uh, sinus infections, it seems that we are approaching an era where even cancer will be something we can live with. Uh, without significant concerns. However, even today, when you go to the hospital, we find that there are far more diseases that cannot be cured by human means than those that can be. I've spent a lot of time caring for people in hospitals and used to think that most illnesses could be cured by doctors, but surprisingly, there is no much that medical professionals cannot hear. Yeah. This realization helped me understand there are many things about the human body that cannot be healed by human power alone. Ultimately, God is the one who must dear, must hear. Yeah. It is especially important that we live healthy lives to serve God's kingdom well. We need to be in good health. Of course, sometimes God allows sickness to draw us closer to Him. 
as he did some people in the Bible. For example, the apostle Paul had a serious illness and asked God to heal him, but God did not. God told Paul that it was for uh, his benefit. Yeah. It is for your benefit, God said to Paul. Most of us are not like Paul. So uh, we should strive to live healthy lives uh, for uh, our missions from God. Our everyday habits are critical for maintaining good health. We must adopt habits that align with the biblical principles of creation. God gave us the gift of breath, and it is through this breath that our bodies are sustained. There is something we can control 24 hours a day, and that is our breathing. If you want to take deeper breaths, you can. If you want to exhale slowly, you can control that too. Simply inhaling through your nose and exhaling slowly through your mouth can revitalize your body. Because when you breathe, oxygen is supplied to your body and your body temperatures rises. With more oxygen and increased body heat, uh, body heat your immune system is strengthened just practicing slow deep breathing in your daily life can help eliminate minor illnesses and improve your overall health not only that but you will also find that your, uh, your concentration improves, which is great for your brain. It's said that with normal breathing, most people do not supply enough oxygen to their brain. When you are stressed and your breathing becomes shallow, what happens to your head? You feel dizzy and overheated, right? People often say, I'm so heated up when they are stressed. Nowadays, some even say, my head is about to explode. <laughs> This happens because the heat is rising to your head. And why does this happen? Because your breathing has become shallow. In fact, through proper breathing, you can reduce the heat in your head. Breathing through your nose, X as a cooling system. Okay. Uh, when you look at a car, uh, you see that it has vents in the front. As the car drives, air rushes in and naturally cools it down. But what happens if you just leave the car running in place without moving? Eventually, the car will overheat and catch fire because it's not cooling down. Similarly, 
God designed our bodies with a natural cooling system, our noses. When we breathe in through our no nose, it cools down our brain. It's actually a very scientific process. So, I encourage you to practice slow, deep breathing in your daily life. Along with this breathing, uh, it is very beneficial to pray. It revives your soul and your spirit. Humans are both body and spirit or soul. And through prayer, our spirits are strengthened. The strength you gain is spiritual, and your soul and spirit receives great power. When you combine prayer with breathing, your spiritual state will be greatly restored. And you will receive wisdom along with peace and happiness in your heart. Don't make this complicated. Just enjoy it quietly through, throughout the day. As you do, invisible healing will occur in your body. Any areas of pain will start to be will start to be healed. It doesn't cost anything, so just take slow breaths in your daily life while asking for the filling of the Holy Spirit. As you exhale, release all stress and unbelief and as you inhale again if if someone comes to find comes to mind uh, pray for them to also receive the fullness of the holy spirit in jesus christ's name break the darkness that is working in their life this is how you can enjoy healing isn't that so peaceful and comforting? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let's take a look at text first. Uh, the first thing we need is spiritual healing. What is the cause of our problems? It's Genesis. Chapter 3. The beginning of all problems is in Genesis chapter 3. Here sin enters the world when humans disobey God. The Bible calls this disobedience sin. And more uh, uh, specifically, it is referred to as original sin. As a result of this sin, humans were separated from God. There was a spiritual break in, in the relationship with God. Humans were originally meant to live with God. And by doing so, we were to have life and experience vitality. But once separated from God, humans spiritually died. This is what the Bible calls death. The result of sin is that humanity was placed under death. We entered the state of spiritual death, and now we cannot experience it eternal life in the body either, but instead are 
bound for physical death. Ultimately, both the spirit and, the, and body will face eternal death, which is hell. This is the state humanity finds itself in, uh, trapped in the hands of Satan, who, who deceived us and led us to fall. What followed from this? Spiritual problems began to emerge. A prime example of this is Cain, the first son of Adam. When God didn't accept Cain's offering, but accepted his brother Abel's offering. Cain became jealous and eventually killed his brother. If you've raised more than one child, you know how common it is for siblings to have jealousy and rivalry. That's why it's best to treat them equally whenever possible. In the past, people used to invest everything in the firstborn so that they could later help the younger siblings. That was common in times of poverty, but it often left the younger siblings with emotional scars. Even today, jealousy and rivalry exist between siblings, just as Cain killed his brother. This shows us how deep Cain's spiritual problem was. But it's not just Cain. How many people today harbor uh, hatred in their hearts and essentially kill others in their minds? This is the spiritual sickness of humanity that comes from being separated from God. And, and it all started with the events in Genesis chapter 3. When you look at the world, we must understand that everyone is caught in Genesis chapter 3. This is why only the gospel can set people free. That's why the apostle Paul said, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall and for short of the glory of God. In Romans 3, verse 10, he said, There is no one righteous, not even one. This is the root cause of all diseases in our lives, the source of all problems and the reason for all suffering. We often say things like, it's because of someone else, or that's the problem, but these are just deceptions. The real issue is the problem of Genesis chapter three. There are many people around you who don't know the gospel, right? How much they must be suffering. We should feel compassion for them, shouldn't we? They are caught in Genesis, in the Genesis chapter 3 problem. So they are suffering greatly. Unbelievers are tormented because they are trapped by the devil. By their fate, destiny, and curses. You need to see and understand them through the eyes of the gospel. You need to feel compassion for them. But God has given the answer to all these problems. And that answer is found in Genesis 3 verse 15. Will he promise to send 
the offspring of the woman. He will come and crush the serpent's, Satan's head. This was prophesied exactly as it happened. The people trapped in the dead Genesis chapter 3 problem got opened the way for salvation right in Genesis chapter 3. What is that why? What is that way? What's that way? It promised to send the offspring of the woman to bind the power of Satan and reconcile humanity who had been separated from God back to him. Humanity was cursed because of sin, but God promised to remove all their sin. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20, when Jesus asked uh, to his disciples, Who do you say I am? At the time, Peter, said, Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who's this offspring of the woman? It is Jesus, the Christ. So when you meet Jesus, it means you have been completely set free from the curse of Genesis chapter 3. You must genuinely hold this thankfulness and joy in your heart. Are happy <laughs> because of the grace of God, the salvation. A few days ago, my wife and my wife said uh, something to our uh, our daughters during dinner. She asked them, "Do you realize what a great blessing you have? Who in your school enjoys the gospel like you do? Not many, right?" You are special people. There are probably some other children of God besides you. But think of that. How many people live completely within the gospel, made it on their prayer journals every day, worship regularly, and hold on to the covenant of world evangelization while studying? Well, around you, is there a remnant like that? As I listened to her, I realized it's true. It's hard to find children around our daughters who truly enjoy the gospel. There aren't many. Look around you. You live in a village or a neighborhood with many people. Are there strong believers in the gospel like you? Do you see many people who truly understand the gospel, the Christ, who have escaped from, escaped uh, the curse of Genesis chapter 3, who have found their complete answer and conclusion in Christ? who live as evangelists? How many of them are there in your community? There aren't many. Surprisingly, there are very few. So, we are entered an incredible blessing. Yeah, we've entered an uh, amazing blessing, haven't we? That's why you have every reason to rejoice, don't you? We should be thankful. We must be thankful for knowing the gospel. Be grateful that you have the gospel. So live enjoying the gospel. Don't live weighed down. Understand? 
Don't let the problems, circumstances, and situations press you down. Even if you are burdened, it won't be good for your body, mind, or soul. It's not good for anything. Understand? Even the people around you who see you weighed down will find it difficult. And everyone will be affected, right? So break free from it and start enjoying it. Enjoy what? The fact that you are a child of God. Christ has already solved every problem in your life. The offspring of the woman, Christ, has come and crushed it, the serpent's head. You need to hold on to that. I really love this verse in 1 John chapter 3, verse 5. It says the offspring of the woman, Jesus, came to take away our sin, our sins. You know how heavy and burdensome sin is, don't you? He came to take it away. And also in, in 1 John uh, 3, verse 8, it says the Son of God appeared to destroy the devil's works. How much suffering have we endured because of the devil's works? Jesus came to put an end to all of that. Who is he? He is Jesus Christ, the offspring, the offspring of the woman. Where is he now? He is seated at the right hand of the heavenly throne, ruling over us. And through the Holy Spirit, he is within us. Therefore, you must lay everything in your life down before Christ. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil, to take away all your sins, and to completely remove the curses and the gestures that began in Genesis chapter 3. That Christ is now with you as your Lord. So, in this era, you are a child of God with the gospel. You are the remnant. You are the evangelist. The remaining one in this age if you look around you, it's hard to find the remnants. But you are that representative person. That means you are the most blessed people, blessed person uh, in your village, the most blessed person in your family, and the most blessed person in your field. So Hold on to the pride of the gospel and the dignity of being a child of God. When my daughters heard this, I could see a real sense of pride come into their eyes. That's right. It's an incredible blessing that we have come to understand the gospel. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 to 8, even with the law, the problem of life cannot be solved. Many prophets came, but they couldn't resolve the Genesis chapter 3 problems either. That's why in Matthew uh, <clears throat> chapter 17, uh, we see Moses appear representing the law and Eliza representing the pro prophets. But they both disappeared. Only Jesus remained. Yes, only Jesus has completely resolved the Genesis chapter 3 problem that was affecting you. It's only Jesus who can solve the Genesis chapter 3 problem 
gripping your family. Satan trembles and flees away, flees army at the name of Jesus. Darkness and demons are cast out only in the name of Jesus. Only through Jesus can humanity be freed from all sin. God opened this way and we have met this Jesus. Hallelujah! What a reason to be thankful. In Matthew chapter uh, 28 verses 16 to 20, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He's talking about authority over all the spiritual realms and the world. Jesus holds all authority over heaven and on and earth. What did he tell us to do? Go and make disciples of all nations. He promises, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Today, the Lord is with you. With the truth, we need to hold on to the prayer topic Jesus gave us. What's that? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. Receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive the authority, the, the power. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. This is the prayer topic he gave us. I hope you pray deeply and constantly for the feeling of the Holy Spirit every time you breathe. What happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon us? We receive power from God. Even today, we need, to, we need this power from God. The Lord has promised to give the fullness of the Holy Spirit to those who pray. And He will give us this power. Even if it's just for five minutes Pray, Lord, please fill my heart, my mind, my soul, my body, and every cell in me with your Holy Spirit. And please give me the power you promised so that I may be your witness today. What does it mean to be a witness? It means having evidence. You have evidence there. You have evidence. Jesus is the Christ. The problems you, have, you face now are simply so that God can give you more evidence. The difficulties you are experiencing are so that he, uh, he can give you proof of his work. Look at the remnants in the Bible. What were their difficulties? They were all answers from God, preparing them to become innocent. They were blessings. So today, nothing is a problem. Nothing is a curse. And nothing is a conflict, right? It's all a blessing for you and me. Where is the crisis? There's no crisis. It might seem strange to say there is no crisis when a crisis is here. But if you see the hidden opportunity behind it, then the crisis becomes a blessing. Right? Amen. So make Christ the best. Make the Christ the master of your life. Resolve everything in Christ and enjoy Christ. When you do this, you will experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. This is what we call spiritual healing. To put it simply, spiritual healing means coming to the conclusion in Christ. 
making him the Lord of your life, holding on to the Christ alone, enjoying his presence, and being filled with the Holy Spirit through the name of Christ Jesus. I hope you experience spiritual healing. Uh, next, we must also receive healing in our hearts. It's getting too long, so I will continue with this next week. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your wonderful grace and your plan for us. You gave us true life, the salvation. Lord, we are thankful for your grace. We want to enjoy the status and authority. Lord, we believe that Jesus took up our infirmities and our diseases. He bore our diseases through the cross. Yes, Lord. You took away all our sins and our diseases and curses through your blood. We believe that truth, Lord. Lord, please fill us with your spirit. Lord, please heal us with your gospel, your words. Please heal our spirit and body. Lord, please lead us for your glory. Please heal our scars and our heart and our lives. Lord, please bless our our church members and their family. Lord, please bless every step they take. Lord, help them to enjoy reading prayer 24 hours always. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Did you notice one ghost user has joined? <laughs>